We've seen in the classic prisoner's dilemma how the two criminals could not sustain cooperation among each other, and how that gave them an incentive to join a mafia that would threaten them with severe consequences were they ever to be caught not cooperating. As a result, they could reach the cooperative outcome because the mafia changed the payoffs in the matrix. It changed the game away from being a prisoner's dilemma. But we can apply exactly the same logic to the tragedy of the commons. Here we have two players who can either conserve or not conserve a commonly held resource like fish in a lake. If they don't conserve, they run down the fish population and end up at the suboptimal outcome. And the problem is that non-cooperation or not conserving is a dominant strategy for both players. So that's exactly where they're going to end up unless they do something about it. Now, these players don't have to go as far as to join the mafia. They can simply hire the government to impose a penalty for non-cooperation. So imagine that the government imposed a $20 penalty for not conserving, for taking too many fish out of the lake. We can then start with the same payoff matrix that we originally had and ask what will change in that matrix? Well, the government is imposing a penalty for not conserving. So if you're conserving, your payoffs aren't changing. So when both are conserving, those payoffs stay exactly 75. When player 1 is conserving, that payoff stays exactly 40. But player 2 is not conserving in the cell, so that 80 would turn into a 60. Similarly, if we're in this column and player 1 does not cooperate, then player 1 gets the penalty and his payoff declines to 60. But player 2's will stay 40 because player 2 is cooperating. And then finally, in this last cell, neither player is cooperating, so both players will incur a penalty. Instead of 50, the payoff will become 30 for each. Now we can ask what will happen in this game. Suppose you're player 1. You think that player 2 will conserve. What's your best response to that? Well, you can either conserve and get 75, or not conserve and get 60. 75 is better, so you should conserve. What if you think player 2 is not going to conserve? Well, then you're going to be in this column, choosing between 40 and 30. 40 is better, so again, conserving is the better response. In other words, cooperation or conserving is now a dominant strategy for player 1. And the same is true for player 2. If player 2 thinks player 1 is going to conserve, she knows she's going to be in this row. Choosing between 75 and 60, 75 is better, so conserving is better. But if she thinks player 1 is not going to cooperate, then she's going to be in this row. Choosing between 40 and 30, 40 is better, so again her best response is to conserve. So for player 2, conserving or cooperating is now a dominant strategy. And as a result, we end up in this equilibrium that will be equal to the social optimum. So just like in the case of a mafia, a government can make non-cooperation less pleasant, except it doesn't have to go as far as the mafia did in our prisoner's dilemma example. It can simply impose a penalty. Now before you take the quiz, you can ask yourself, how low a penalty could the government impose and still cause cooperating to be a dominant strategy for both players? Or you could ask yourself, how high could the penalty go and still have non-cooperation, non-conservation, be the dominant strategy? If the government imposed a penalty of a penny, it wouldn't change the incentives of the original game very much. So how high could that penalty go and still have it be the case that not conserving is a dominant strategy for both players. So think about that, and I'll ask you a few questions about that on the quiz.